Hello, hi, this is yours truly Clarice T for the 10th episode of this series of podcasts. Today is Tuesday, the 27th of June, 2023. And for this podcast, even though we may not be scientists, um, I know I am not, but uh, by, um, you know, reading and um, partaking of the knowledge and wisdom of others, Somehow it kind of rub on us. Uh, we don't have to get a degree, a PhD in order to... No, no, no. The best example of that is we don't have to know how the process of electricity um, happens. How it reaches our laptop, our cell phone charging. Um, sufficient to know that um, upon payment of the electricity bill every month, uh, we can plug from the source, right? So we may not be an expert like a lineman of the electric company, but we can borrow their wisdom and we, we can uh, ass be assured that they know what they're doing and we can quote them for sure. So the knowledge is differentiated from wisdom. And from time to time, we get the idea of how razor-sharp balance can tip um, to one side and um, a disaster usually follows. Many things are needed to be preserved or maintained in order to preserve and maintain human life. Um, take, for instance, the carbon monoxide poisoning. It happens when the breathing air is disrupted in its composition, although oxygen is still in there. It's not the absence of oxygen, but the altering of composition that can lead to almost instantaneous death. And we've seen this in movies. Also, a common sense warning, like when I was driving long distance, I would be reminded not to, uh, you know, when, one, when you um, take a break, like take a nap in between long drives, uh, it's one, um, like taking a nap in a parking lot and, um, the air code with the air condition running um, somehow we have to get it checked that uh, it will not leak something like that and I given the general description no wait given the general description that I um, use it will show that I'm really not an expert I'm just at the receiving end of advisories and wise uh, warnings to heed so going back, like a natural disaster occurrence, that should it happen every day for a week, like seven days a week, like um, in our recent history, um, I don't think there is a Filipino who will not know the kind of um, super typhoon Yolanda is like. Although we did not uh, experience it directly, of course, uh, we are one with uh, the regions that had been so devastated by this. Uh, it's a catast catastrophe. The devastation uh, can scar. Uh, probably they even now, uh, some some compatriots can be scarred or traumatized by that one reminder of our helplessness to protect ourselves against nature's wrath. And, you know, statements like this where we attribute emotion, um, it is our own, um, the use of the language is re really a, a matter of personal choice. We tend to... Um, know about it instantly if we use the kind of reference that we would that we would use to one another like nature's wrath nature's fury because we don't really they are not they are not natural persons right but still 
um, we attribute those kinds of emotions because that's how we understand instantly um, what is meant to be conveyed. And, and what happens if such a typhoon um, takes place seven consecutive days in one particular um, area? I give away my current um, occupation at this time when I describe, you know, ascribing something of an emotion, human-like emotion, uh, the juridical entity. And yeah, do you, do you know what else comes to my mind when I um, contemplate on the characteristic of juridical entity like uh, they have no emotions. We cannot, um, you know, implore um, their mercy and the love and all the, like, compassion because they are created for their obedience to the purpose by which they are created. And just like you know, um, the instruments of destruction that can um, freeze our blood, you know, um, figuratively speaking, the bad, they, uh, we cannot reason with them, we cannot um, ask compassion because they are not the ones who should hear our plea, our appeal, our, um, as we beg for our mercy, they are not the one who can do something about it, you know, to, uh, to avert the, what's on track, what has been initiated already. And, you know, for lack of commitment to a known God, such an act can be attributed to just any god the object of awe and reverence can be given to the nearest logical explanation like here in the um in we have uh, we have this region calabar zone which is composed of cavite batangas laguna quezon and rizal and in the mountainous region um there is a folklore about maria makiling the patroness the supernatural patroness the enchantress who is uh like a supernatural being fairy a nymph protecting the the forest and the um, uh, nature the mountain is a region where um, it's uh, it's a warning of some sort for the strays, you know, for the um, those who will cause devastation to our nature. So, like Freya, and um, the imagery of those uh, gods that we read. And heard like Baal. Um, it goes to show that we really have free will, even in our uh, deepest imagination, where all these things can be conceived. And you know what? We have really to look with um, me appreciation and uh, newfound <laughs> appreciation for the race of the Jews. And we have something to thank them for that. The display of the best and worst act of a living God, like, um, you know, um, withdrawing favors, like uh, the absence of the active protection or what we call the favor of God can be so, like if you're in the middle of a trial a very like um your back is against the wall it's l about life and death situation without the confidence that god has your back and that he will show favor with you and that uh he will never leave you and abandon you on your own 
Um, that is such not just a psychological boost but because of the history of the Jews walking alongside their uh, the living God they have the legacy within their person of that experience so for the favor to be absent they can be uh, for me I can equate um, <laughs> I can equate the clearness of vision, the clearness, you know, the um, clear-mindedness with uh, the actual, with that half of the problem is already solved. Because if our presence of mind is the first to fly away, just imagine you um, on stage holding the microphone and without your presence of mind oh my gosh and if the ground will suddenly open up we'd gladly <laughs> we'd thankfully jump into it but to avoid further humiliation but really um that's we can be um in a more um, serious situation a lot lot serious situation and um, the presence of mind where to call for help what to do next they are wisdom and they can be associated with um, unshrouded or with blindfold that's suddenly been taken off so that we can see and we are not confounded we are not confused as others uh, can see us more objectively and they probably know what uh, the solution for our problem and are not doing anything about it um, there is not a helping hand and for you who, who and for you who are going through that um, that upheaval for whatever reason and you feel like blindfold, blindfolded you cannot see clearly that is sometimes the worst of it the display of the best and worst act of a living God for all to see um, the history of the Jewish people the Israelites um, can attest to that when God heeds his face it can be the worst thing that can happen those who come out as the beneficiaries of that display uh, of interplay between between a living God and the created mankind are those who learn from the mistakes of others you know, even the atheists in their innermost sanctum where they'd rather die than admit there is a place in their heart where a reverence for their designated divine being is being held, which can somehow explain the awesomeness of nature. Uh, the, this, this is the place where they are revering uh, the works of nature, the awesomeness of nature, and many things that cannot be explained and overcome by science or controlled by mere man, Christians and atheists both. So there is a um, place for that reverence in their inner sanctum. I bet it exists. Well, their words can reveal it can reveal it like just you wait and see science can catch up to this darn problem and we're all going to be um, all right by then until then we just have to wait and hang on I have confidence in man's unquenchable thirst for learning like our scientists and inventors technology will be developed to solve this dilemma Yes, it can happen, but it sh which also means creating something of a new dilemma, right? Sometimes, or is it most of the time? Anyway, the keeper of the balance can take the form of any supernatural being because it is an existing scientific fact and we're the living proof of it. And it's not part of any government position 
or church or temple or any religion like the Department of Education or, Depart or, or Department of Environment and Natural Resources where it should be somehow like Department of Economics because it's about preserving the source of economic assets of a country which is usually nature, natural world. The definition of economics being the study of scarcity and its implications for the use of resources, production of goods and services, growth of production and welfare over time, and a great variety of other complex issues of vital concern to society. So what concerns the society is prevention of floods, food shortage, etc. So um, that's economics, managing effectively um, what little or uh, the richness, the abundance of our assets, of natural resources. Um, having said that, uh, don't we all play with the cards we're dealt with, like the um, natural phenomenon, the natural uh, calamities, the storm, typhoons, and earthquakes. So who's dealing us um, those events? Um, like, yeah, in a simile, or is it simile? <laughs> anyway, um, who's dealing us the proverbial cards that uh, we can only accept? We don't have a hand in the kind of uh, cards that are going our way. I believe he's about to introduce the more intimate knowledge of his self as the hand, as the uh, being who controls everything. To this day, Earth remains to be a unique planet and the balance can tip and we'd be like other planets where some of the notable personalities have visited for prospecting in the real estate industry and yet they always come back to earth. Dangers and threats abound. Here, um, earthbound. Still, it's the only habitable place there is. So, um, as of this podcast, the planet earth is still considered um, the exception to the rule, the unique planet amongst the planets. So you and I are part of that uniqueness. Like it can take a very small invisible virus like coronavirus to be engineered. I'm not saying that it's human engineer. I am just using, you know, the word um, mass murder and by nature which can also be labeled which can also be labeled as natural death from the natural world or of the natural cause so any imbalance can result in an epic destruction and yet there's no actual human department of balancing of nature and not for lack of trying i, I, I admire the europeans especially the scandinavians it's admirable how they preserve the superiority, discipline, and values embedded in their psyche and culture uh, for the preservation of nature. Their ecology, even I don't, I, I haven't read their um, laws, but um, ecology doesn't have to be spelled out in their public administration laws. It's and by the way, it's a ripe and bottomless source of fiction plot for um, Scandinavian, Scandinavian filmmakers and writers of every generation. And the genre, of course, is fantasy or science fiction or folklore. But since we haven't seen yet an actual gadget that have contra contraptions that uh, has control over nature, where do we attribute that all in important um, function and the source of life on earth? This is the real McCoy, right? The real force majeure. Is it 
inconceivable then that it will not be revealed to us somehow, some ways. This is the authentic force majeure. The longer the years we live in this life, it's a testimony to the preservation, to the durable preservation power of a non-human and supernatural being. Job chapter 37 At this my heart pounds and leaps from its place. Listen, listen to the roar of his voice, to the rumbling that comes from his mouth. He unleashes his lightning beneath the whole heaven and sends it to the ends of the earth. After that comes the sound of his roar. He thunders with his majestic voice. When his voice resounds, he holds nothing back. God's voice thunders in marvelous ways. He does great things beyond our understanding. He says to the snow, fall on the earth, and to the rain shower, be a mighty downpour, so that everyone he has made may know his work. He stops all people from their labor. The animals take cover, they remain in their dens. The tempest comes out from its chamber, the cold from the driving winds. The breath of God produces ice, and the broad waters become frozen. He loads the clouds with moisture. He scatters his lightning through them. At his direction, they swirl around over the face of the whole earth to do whatever he commands them. Science explains it, but science doesn't cause it, and this is not my original quote. <laughs> Throughout the history of man, we may not have the exact details, but which will be marvelous if we have it. Don't, uh, don't we all know want to uh, you know, have a, an authentic account of their day-to-day -day life, like arriving at a historical decision? If you're like me, who is probably a movie addict, <laughs> You'd, um, I am an authority uh, in saying that the plots um, can be the same. The execution of the film uh, can vary and that's where the entertainment comes from. But with regards to the plot, sometimes, you know, they follow a formula. And it's the same with history. Somehow we know that names are substituted for the plots being repeated over and over again. The rise and fall of civilizations can be condensed into some equations where names and personal information and location can be the value of X and Y of an algebraic expression. The absence of personal accounts from people with personal knowledge can bog down the work of our historians and scientists who are proving one theory or one school of thought from another. Maybe it's an account of lack of technology to preserve historical details in ancient or early times. But then, uh, remember that personal accounts are not all accurate. So the absence of authentic historical narrative is also the absence of false and deceptive historical narratives. The crucible of fire remains lighted and spread throughout history for the unreal to be consumed, leaving the pure. The principle being that God will take care of his image and legacy and will not share it even with first-class forgery or fakes. The proof he would leave behind can be counterfeited at any point in history. It may very well be that a thousand years is needed to outlast the best counterfeit. And so it's still an act of an omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent God. What is the agent of preservation used by the food manufacturer and livestock businesses? Salt, isn't it? So before the refrigeration became a household name, um, the versatility of salt was already um, an accepted fact. And you know what? Um, 
this very thing that can affect my wellness upon being ingested, upon it touching my mouth. Oh my gosh, it's the salt. And it's taking long. So for um, the end of this, for my parting shots for this podcast, I don't know that there is any one day wherein my outward appearance had shown astounding difference like a before and after of a makeup transformation. Um, Just like a before and after when I prayed my acceptance of the Lord's way of salvation and that I repent of my unbelief amongst the many, oh so many sins that I have. It's like my profile without the foundation, eyebrows, eye makeup, and lipstick, which is the before and after we're in. Hopefully, there is a wow, (laughs) wow factor. The transformation of the before and after is maybe the reason why some people are very passionate in closing their ears to um, sharing of the gospel. That maybe some people are worried that if they believe that there was a Jesus whom they can know and a Jesus, uh, that there is a Jesus, um, that before rejecting him or accepting, there may be some weird transformation and it will show unfavorably to them when that happens. Probably that is um, a notion that had not been um, acknowledged I don't know and I'm not even referring to LGBTQ community in this matter it is one topic that we can't can't hit and run like after dropping bomb and then let's run for it that's it just like just like how parental concerns are which which is not just for one sitting as you can hear in the background I can I cannot keep it the secret you know the struggle is real the pain is real being guardians of um kids toddlers and kindergarten age oh my gosh um i need all the supernatural help i can get no um seriously though for ordinary persons who may be worried of the toll it can exact on them and their lifestyle like oh my it can be an end of a good and fun life as we know it so they have that reservation the dictum of appropriate dressing is a secular all-around thing my dears universal common sense personal beliefs cause and effect hello wardrobe malfunction hello in laws outrageous impression <laughs> when you're caught off guard with a attire outfit of the day it can happen So I refer to the belief system that starts with I truly don't fully understand and there is no right time for it. It seems I cannot be absent from my everyday routine. I cannot set um, a long period of time in the wilderness on my own. I cannot do um, soul searching like um, how there is no... A better time for podcast than what is now i truly don't fully understand but in the privacy of my most private place um amidst the crowd amidst the routines and the ordinary and normal life i have i open my heart to you oh jesus teach me what it really is that i am missing out by rejecting you or what i'm gaining by believing that you died for my sins we believe the worst like in my case <gasps> it's confession time i truly believe th- there was a point in time if i may just um prolong this parting word i was i thought i really thought that i was being courted and i was being pursued by a married man and i felt flattered but also disturbed because this should not be but it's quite yeah it's quite what it's um a good boost to my morale that um even in my um domesticated (laughs) domesticated um look 
someone would still uh, see my feminine attraction, something like that. And uh, so I felt flattered and against a better judgment. I even spread the secret, quote unquote. Um, and um, to cut the sh story short, it was embarrassing. Probably one of the most embarrassing moments of my life because it didn't turn out that way. Probably I will um, recall the details or not. <laughs> but the point is I, I've lived and had gotten over it. So we're so used to giving our life to something we believe in, like planting trees and doing our bit for the environment or nature. Uh, like when there's a viral video of someone who had been victimized and justly treated, we allot precious time for those things. We can comment or share mindlessly, generally speaking. If we have used up energy and precious time for something like that, why not with something that others like me have said, it has eternity as one of the stakes. Is that not worth consciously opening your heart and your mind while you still can? Jeremiah, from the book of Jeremiah, you will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you, declares the, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. It has its context context and captivity is its context captivity captivity to indebtedness we need wisdom and a helping hand obviously captivity from addiction from an aberration from a torment from an abusive relationship captivity and because jesus said ask and it will be given to you because Jesus said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Emphasis on everyone. So this is me. This beats the generic pronoun that underrepresents or discriminates. In my belief, because I count myself as part of it, although I'm not a he but a she the term everyone is the qualifier i can afford not to take offense at the use of he for me who is a woman and that's it for now thank you for listening until next time bye ah uh, yeah i also want to announce uh the coming um dates for the special events that i will be part of please tune in and that's it. Bye.